You can get here first? Who's gonna get here first? Oh yeah, we got there. Yes. High five. Come on down, we got room for you. There you go. Good morning everyone, how we doing? On the Advent read now. One, two, three, and four. Only one more to go. Christmas Eve is on Saturday. You guys excited for presents and all that? Yes, yes, yes. Very exciting, right? I'm excited for presents too. I have to admit, right? Today I want to talk to you about kings. Do you know what a king is? Hmm. What's a king? Does a king wear a crown? Yeah, he wears a crown, right? He rules over people. Where does a king live? Does he live in just a normal house? No, where does he live? In a castle, in a castle right? Is a king poor? No, a king is very rich, right? He has gold and so many treasures, right? We have rulers too, like we have a president. Does our president just live in a normal house? No, he lives in the White House. He lives in a mansion, right? Anything he wants, he can have it like that. A king or a ruler can say, I want chocolate right now. And it'll be at his feet in just a second, right? He can have whatever he wants. Well, Jesus is a king too. Did you know that? But Jesus is a different type of king. Jesus lives in something a little bit differently. Here's Jesus' castle. Do we know what this is? What is this? Hmm. You know, we sing all the time, away in a manger. This is a manger. You know what a manger is for? It's for animals to eat from. So a cow would go, nom, 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 from the manger, right? <laughs> this is what Jesus was born into. Is this clean? It's pretty dirty, right? You get animals eating from your animals clean? No, they're pretty dirty too, right? This is not like a king's mansion with a big castle and a huge bed. Jesus was born in such a lowly manger. Jesus is not a king that brings for himself treasures. Jesus is a king who gives treasures away. He sacrifices for you. He gives you treasures. He gave up his greatest treasure, even his life, for you. That's how much Jesus loves you. That he could have had all the best in the world. He could have had everything he wanted. But he chose you over everything else. Isn't that a good thing? That's the best thing, right? Let's pray, shall we? Dear God, Father in heaven, thank you for sending your son Jesus, a different king, a different ruler than all earthly rulers, who gave up everything for us. Fill us with the joy of Christmas, knowing that we have eternal life because Jesus gave up his life for us and he conquered death when he rose from the dead. Fill us with faith as we go out each and every day. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. All right, boys and girls, thank you. We'll see you after Sunday school. And let's rise and sing our next song. Grace, mercy, and peace to you. Grace, mercy, and peace to you from God our Father and our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Amen. You cannot love everyone. And I don't mean this in a way like we're all sinful, we're all imperfect people, so of course we can't perfectly love everyone. I mean this in the way that it's not physically possible for us to love everyone. Sometimes you hear some well-meaning Christians say Christians are called to love all people, but this isn't really possible unless you have a very shallow definition of what love is. 
I mean, there's not enough time in the day for us to love everyone. It's like we only have so much love to give, like peanut butter spread over too much bread. I mean, it could very easily, we could easily say, well, I love everyone and not do anything, but what is love? Love is living it out. Love is putting your love into action. One common example this Christmas season, right? A lot of people like to bake. Who likes to bake? Anyone like to bake here? Yeah, yeah. They bake Christmas cookies, right, as a, you know, a token of love for their friends and their family. I got a homework assignment for you, Jen. I need you to bake 8 billion Christmas cookies by next week. Can you do that? <sighs> the spirit might be willing, right? But the body is weak. We have physical lim- limitations. Only so much in the time in the day we cannot love everybody. And the Bible doesn't talk this way about love either. There is no commandment in the Bible that says, Thou shalt love everybody. Of course, we're not to hate anyone. But when the Bible talks about love, it's much more focused. Love your neighbor. Love each other. Love fellow Christians. Love even your enemies. Who are Christians called to love? We're called to love the people in our lives. The people we encounter day by day by day. Those people right in front of us. People inside this building right now. And even our enemies who might sit across the table at Christmas from us, right? Uh, We're called to love the people we know. We're called the people we encounter upon the road. The people God has put in our lives. Jesus illustrates this point with a parable, a very well-known parable, the parable of the Good Samaritan. Now, it's easy to talk about, like, we love, we love so much, but that can kind of sometimes be just lip service, right? We want to put our love into action. Well, in the parable of the Good Samaritan, we hear about a thief, right? A thief walking, or not not a thief, just a regular man walking on the road, and thieves come, and they ambush him, and they beat the snot out of him, and they steal all his stuff and leave him half dead on the side of the road. But no fear, the cavalry is coming. Two men of God are walking. Two religious men that say they love God so much are walking by. And they have an opportunity not just to love lip service, not just to say they love, but to put their love into action. And they come and help that man on the side of the road, right? No, they walk right past. It's the Samaritan the rejected of society, the undesirable, who loves his God and shows true love to that man on the road. He puts that love into action, dressing his wounds, giving him a place to stay, caring for him as he might care for his own self. How are we to love, brothers and sisters? Not shallow, not just lip service, but putting our love into action to those that we encounter in our lives. Last week in the 915 service, we had a children's message like we always do. And I said to the kids, no matter where you end up in life, whether you're a firefighter or a nurse or you work with your hands with electric, electrical appliances, no matter what you end up as a teacher, God can use you to do his work. God can use you as a messenger of love. And how true that is for all of us here. We all have different situations in life, different roles in life, meet different people in life. And we all have different opportunities to live out that love to those that need it. Brothers and sisters, there are so many hurting people out there that need to see this love. And I'll be quite honest, for the last couple years, you've probably seen it and heard it too, there's been a general distrust of the church. A lot of pastors have made dumb decisions and church bodies say one thing and they practice the other. They hear a lot of lip service love. We love everybody, but do they see it? 
Well, they see it in all of you. We give. We care. We listen. What we're building here at Grace and what we're trying to build, you know, we, we do a lot of ministry work out in our community. Right? We raise food, we raise funds, we have Marines Haven here supplying housing for those who have no place to stay. And these are all well and good things, and we need to continue doing these at the church. But we also want to build something else. A ministry of presence. The ministry of presence is just being in the lives of those around us. People that are quietly begging for any hope, anyone to care, to reach out. That is what we're here for. That's what we're here in this building for, to care for one another by being present in their lives and to be out there bringing people in here, caring for one another, giving a phone call, uh, texting someone, I'm praying for you, reaching out, saying, we are here for you. And you might say, I, I, well, I don't know what to say. I don't know what to do. The cool thing about the ministry of presence is 95% of it is just being there. When I go to the hospital to do hospital calls, 95% of my work is done just by walking into the door and loving them enough just to be there. This is what true love, not shallow love, true love looks like. The last candle on our Advent wreath is the candle of love. And when we light this candle, we remember the love that Jesus shows to us and to all people. For we might not be able to love everyone. There's not enough time in the day. There is one who has loved everyone, and his name is Jesus Christ, who loved the whole world by coming down to it and giving his life for it, that we all might have forgiveness, and those who believe in him might have eternal life in his name. Jesus Christ didn't have to come down. Could have stayed up in heaven and said, Love you guys. Have fun down there. But he practiced a ministry of presence. He was present, present among sinners. Those who needed to see him. Those that needed hope. And he's present among us all today too. His body and blood for us to eat and to drink. He shows how much He loves us by giving Himself up for us. Self-sacrificial love. That's what true love looks like. So brothers and sisters, as we leave these doors today, as we leave this building, show even a shadow of the love that Christ has shown you by being present in the lives of those around you, by reaching out, by caring, by loving those that God has put in your life. For God has put people in your life. And God can use you to show the love of Christ to everyone you see. In the holy name of Jesus. Amen.